Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. When you first dive into the world of tube power amps, you might feel just a little bit lost. With a solid state amp, all you have to do is hook it up, or hook up the components, and let it do its job. It's pretty much set it and forget it. With tube amps, there's a little extra that comes with them. While it's good to let all the equipment warm up before use, tube amplifiers typically perform better after the tubes have been given more time to do so. Now, often it's at least 20 minutes, and sometimes it can take upwards of three hours to reach their optimal performance. Tubes eventually have to be replaced as well, just like light bulbs do. Fortunately, they last a lot longer than your average light bulb. But still, tubes aren't inexpensive, and it's another expense solid state amp owners don't have to worry about. For those new to tube amps, you'll also come up against terms that will be unfamiliar. And today we're going to discuss two of those terms to help remove the mystery. It's no secret that I love tubes. I've gone into why before, I think in just the last episode, so I won't get into all that now. What I do want to do though, is to talk about two terms you'll run into and what they mean. Those terms are matching and biasing. Are they the same thing? No, they're, they're completely different. Well, let's start with tube matching. A matched pair or set of tubes are all the same. When buying a set of tubes, the vendor will sometimes indicate that you're buying a matched pair or a matched set. It means they're all the same brand. Well, that's a given, but it means a little bit more. I recently bought a pair of new old stock uh, Mullard tubes for my Phono preamp that were matched. Now, matching tubes involves measuring their electrical characteristics. Even tubes that were made at exactly the same time in the exact same place may not match. Every tube's a little bit different, kind of like snowflakes. Matching can be done by measuring the tube's plate current. I won't get into how this is done, it really doesn't matter. But what's important is to know what it is as opposed to biasing, which we'll get to in a moment. Matched tubes, those with electrical characteristics that are similar, will perform better together. They'll share the workload evenly. Now, if one tube is overworked because they are unmatched, it might cause the tube to fail earlier than it would have. Matched tubes will last longer. If you buy a set of matched tubes and a couple are spares, you can always replace one that goes bad knowing that the replacement tube will play well with the existing ones, or one. Do you need to worry about matching tubes? No, they just know that buying matched tubes is preferable. They perform better and the result can be a better sound stage when listening to your favorite record. Next up is biasing. This is something you may have to do yourself. I say may because some tube amps on the market have a feature that's called auto biasing or self biasing, which will take care of it for you. You'll hear some claim that you give up a tiny bit of sound quality for this feature. Whether it's noticeable or not is arguable. Amplifiers without a self biasing feature, leave it up to the owner to do it. And most all of the amplifiers on the market today, really, they make it easy. To do so typically requires a small screwdriver and, a, and watching a meter that's located on the amp. Again, we won't get into that here as every amp is different, but biasing measures the amount of current that flows through the tube when it is in an idle state, meaning that no music is playing, no signal is going through. It ensures that the tube is set at its optimal performance. Now, this increases both the quality of the sound and the life of the tube itself. Biased tubes won't overheat and they shouldn't overheat and they'll need to be replaced less often than unbiased tubes. Don't be intimidated. If you have your heart set on a particular amp and you find out it's not a self-biasing model, manually doing so isn't difficult and the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Generally, it takes less than a couple of minutes and the owner's manual will walk you through the steps. Now, once you've done it once, it's like riding a bike or throwing a baseball. Now, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at my site, joyofvinyl.com, or by leaving a comment below. And if you enjoyed this episode, you can also click subscribe over here. Here. <laughs> and until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.